First, we have now uh, Jody Garnett, and he has been uh, several times, I think, yeah, two times on the board, but he has always had been uh, responsible for taking care that uh, if you have a project, that it is, um, let's say, embraced or become ideally an always geo project, and he will tell us what is needed for that. Thanks for the kind introduction. Um, so yes, I'm really impressed that everyone's here. Um, how many folks are actually from a development team? A couple people, so that's great. Um, I actually don't mind uh, if projects join OSGEO. I actually work with a couple groups. I also work with the Eclipse Foundation and Location Tech. My uh, goal in all of this is to help project teams not be embarrassing on the internet. So it's a little bit tricky to set open source projects up for success. Um, the different software foundations have different guidelines and assistance and, uh, and so on that they can offer. OSGEO uh, has our, our direction, our understanding of how we would like to see projects operate. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about this today. But I want to make sure everyone understands that OSGEO's job, our mission, our vision, is to empower everyone with open source, geospatial. And so if you have an open source project that has anything to do with mapping and location, we want you to follow up with me or the incubation committee email list after this talk. And we want to see your project listed for the public on our website. You don't have to join the foundation, but we, our mission is to introduce you uh, to the people. Uh, so I'm uh, employed with GeoCAD. I'm a technical director. I do have a work on a couple open source projects. Closer? Okay, closer. Uh, so I do work on a couple open source projects. GeoServer and GeoTools are the most well known. Um, I've recently joined the JTS uh, topology suite as part of that project team. And I've also worked on UDIG and a number of other projects in the past. Um, I do a couple of activities with the OS uh, Geo Foundation, board member incubation chair, uh, and also the Eclipse Foundation. So OSGEO is a not-for-profit software foundation. Um, we really focus on outreach and advocacy, but we do offer a lot of guidance and assistance for software projects. And OSGEO is volunteer-driven. So all of the activities we talk about are driven by passionate individuals uh, from around the world. OSGEO works with, on open source, obviously. Uh, but we also try to collaborate with folks on open data and open standards, and recently open education. So I'm here as uh, Incubation Committee Chair to talk to you a little bit about what we offer software projects. So OSGEO supports a great collection of, pro of projects, and we've recently started a new program uh, focused on fostering new talent and innovation. Uh, the biggest thing we offer is a chance for folks to get together with a community of other developers, uh, share stories, enjoy events like this one. Um, and professionally, we try to help project teams govern their project in like a fair and sustainable fashion. So the big one I want to focus on here is just adding your project to our website. Uh, so this is a outreach and advocacy. It's through the marketing committee. Uh, the marketing committee can help you with handouts and branding. Uh, local chapters can do that regional advocacy one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, Geo for All is a lot of that research and academic outreach. So on the website, there's a big project list. It's a directory of all kinds of open source goodness. So um, this is in keeping with our, our mandate. So it's not only for OSGEO projects. When you find a project you're interested in here, you can click on it, and you can get um, the logo, but importantly, you can get a picture of the project team, the folks that work on the project and make it happen. Because we really want to communicate that open source uh, is actually driven by people. You can dig into some of the details on the features uh, and social media associated with the project. The other big one is it's difficult for folks to know where to start with open source. And this is the feedback we get whenever we do public outreach. So there's this choose a project kind of wizard where you can start to look for what kind of software you're hoping to find and dig into the details and discover these projects. 
So what do you need to do to be listed on our website? We want to know, first of all, are you geospatial? Do you have anything to do with location uh, and mapping technology? Uh, we have had uh, project teams come up that are mostly responsible for running a website, and that's not reusable by other groups. So we've had to say um, that that's a great website, but it's not the kind of thing that we can promote. Uh, so we're looking for examples like mapping and cartography, location, drones, indoor mapping, um, point clouds. Uh, there's, more, there's more options here, as many options as your creativity allows. So the counter example is if you are just focused on a single uh, you know, on a single-use activity like a website, you're not necessarily an open source project. For open source, uh, OSGEO is quite receptive to any license approved by the open source uh, initiative. So it's this nice little branding we see here. We can go to their website and uh, search for approved licenses. There's a couple things that we don't support. If you have some kind of end-user license agreement or an education and research license, chances are you're not open source. We really want to make sure that everyone can uh, contribute and use your project. I also really need to update this slide to say free and open source, because a lot of our community really identifies with the principles of the Free Software Foundation, and uh, OSGEO is certainly, uh, it's a big tent. We, uh, I personally, I view open source as a stepping stone to free software. It's kind of like a great way drug, and uh, you know, gradually will bring more of the world to freedom. Um, and this is really important, and this is quite difficult. We want to make sure your project can play nice with others. So do you accept patches or pull requests? Do you have an issue tracker where folks can report uh, problems to you? Um, there's counterexamples. So we certainly have had projects where it's open source, but you must work for the company. Uh, that doesn't really work for us. Uh, we have also had projects that set up uh, like Jump, where it was open source and you could su submit pull requests, but you actually had to pay the company to get them reviewed. Um, so if you've ever wondered where Open Jump happened, uh, that's the original Jump pro uh, project was open source, but not open governance. And so it was forked by the community. Uh, so, just to summarize, in this handy little circle diagram, uh, so our crop circle for adding to the website is we want to make sure you're geospatial, we want to make sure you're open source, and we want to make sure you're fair and allow folks to participate. I'm going to pause awkwardly. Are there any questions? Okay, how many people have their project listed on the website already? couple people, that's good. Does anyone have an open source project uh, that they haven't listed on the website yet? Okay, can you please come and talk to us? We'd love to help you out. Uh, so here's what we check. Um, for geospatial, we check your readme. If it has nothing to do with mapping or location, mm, not so much. For open source, we check your license. And for particip uh, whether it's uh, fair and open to participation, on GitHub, they have a convention of having a contributing file. But we can also check your pull requests and see if you're uh, you know, open to working with others. Uh, so here's what we show. Uh, things about the project identity, the name, brand awareness. We really like to show the project team. Uh, our open source goal is that open source is full of people. Um, we also want to show a little bit about the project technology. So this is helping the public. Um, so if you have a screenshot or something to show people the software they're about to download, core features, any standards, um, keep in mind that this is about serving the public. It's not necessarily about attracting new people to your community. We're trying to showcase your technology, and uh, the project team is where you're, we're showcasing you. Um, so the idea here is that we're trying to demonstrate that open source provides uh, choice, many different alternatives. Uh, a really tricky one for our community that actually caused like a big email kerfuffle is we also want to provide guidance for those who are currently using proprietary technology. So if I go to the PostGIS page, there'll be a little hint that says, hey, if you're using Oracle Spatial, you can migrate to PostGIS. This was upsetting for some folks. Why would we offer free advertising for or Oracle? And the answer is, uh, we're trying to offer an escape route. We're trying to demonstrate that open source is about choice. 
We're trying to demonstrate that open standards are about choice. Now, um, the other one we want to look at is project communication. Your website, any demos, any downloads, help the public reach you. And finally, for the developers, we want to show the issue trackers, the source codes, the license, help folks uh, find your source code and join and contribute to your project. Uh, so this is really about enabling this kind of remix culture uh, for open source. Um, and any commercial support off. So if you'd like to join, email the incubation list. We'll go through and we'll review those things, and then you're kind of done. Uh, you can set up an OSGO user ID. Many folks will already have these. Um, you'll sign into the website. Uh, we'll give you the right roles, and you can create that project team. And then uh, email the incubation committee when you're ready for that to be reviewed and published. Kind of level two here is the OSGO community. Uh, this is your chance to get OSGO branding on your project, and this actually represents you joining our software foundation in a capacity. So uh, OSGO board does have some budget to support our community projects, um, and to access that, you can attend a board meeting and make a request. Maybe you could use that to help uh, fund some of your developers to travel to the next Phosphagy in Calgary. Um, So once again, we want to check your geospatial, but we're going to take it up a level. Do you have user documentation? Do you have a website? Uh, are you active in communicating with you, your users on Gitter or IRC or Stack Exchange? Are you open source? Take it up a level. We want you to check your file headers. Do you actually know where your files came from? Uh, participating, we're going to take it up a level. Show some collaboration. Uh, pull request patches, uh, show an issue tracker. Have you included yourself on OSGO Live? Uh, so the same three principles, but we're asking you to go a little bit further. In recognition, you get this OSGO community logo, very attractive. Uh, you're included in all our open source uh, infrastructure and marketing outreach, so you can request an email list. And you can also take part in our annual budget, uh, making a request by the board. Uh, so we're going to check a bit more. The readme, we're going to check the user documentation. The licenses, we're going to go up a level, check the header. And for participating, we're going to go beyond that contributing file, and we're going to start to see if you're walking your talk. OK, so just some examples there of checking things. Um, almost the same workflow. Email the incubation list. Um, when we're done this process, we're going to cross-link the websites, um, and so on. So the next level after community is actually this incubation process. So I'm just losing myself in my slides. When you're recognized as a full OSGO project, you're actually a normal OSGO committee, just like the marketing committee or GEO for All. You get a project officer. You're covered by our director officers and liability insurance. And you can start initiatives, coordinate fundraising with OSGO, uh, take part in our annual budget. You are responsible to report to the board. We have an AGM uh, meeting this afternoon. And you'll see a lot of the projects reporting in and saying, yes, we're still alive, um, and so on. Uh, the incubation process is um, you're hooked up with a mentor. So the mentor is there to help answer your questions. And it's also there to um, help talk about some of the issues you might find with a little bit of privacy. Because if we do find some issues, we might need to go and work with other software foundations to resolve them. So if your project open, it's not the open source license, it's now communication channels. We want to make sure you're doing open decision making. Um, for the open source license, it's the, it's the OSCI approved license, but we want to make sure you're using email and Stack Exchange. We actually want to see that you have a project steering committee or some way for folks to take part in the direction of your project. Why are we doing this? The joy of open source for us is that open source enables uh, shared development across organizations. So we want to make sure you're including people so they feel part of the project. They feel a sense of ownership. Um, here's a really tricky one. 
we want to make sure you've got an active and open, uh, healthy community. Are the community uh, of developers and users like helping each other, um, testing release candidates, uh, supporting each other? Um, so we can look for examples of collaboration on the issue tracker, um, users helping uh, with testing release candidates. We're looking for demonstration of an understanding of the social contract of open source. So we want to make sure that folks understand that open source is a shared maintenance risk. The developers will be making the software, but the community will be help testing and making it, it better. Um, and another tricky one here is long-term viability. So we'd like to see that your developers come from a number of organizations. So if your company, like the one I was working for, goes out of business, the project can, can continue to go. Um, it's also important that in some cases a project has multiple companies, but they all have the same customer. And that also makes the project fragile and a little bit risky to adopt. Um, so why? Uh, in short, we want to make sure the project has a low bus factor. Uh, and the other one is, I had a talk yesterday on open source procurement. We're looking at the risks associated with open source development, and this is some ways we're evaluating those risks for our community. Um, here's a tricky one. You're an open source project. Can you publish it, your code? Uh, so do you have your open source license? Did all your contributors actually agree to that open source of license? Did you check? During incubation, you'll get a chance to do so. So some projects address this with a code uh, providence review, checking where all the history came from. Maybe they have a list of all the folks who uh, signed a contributor agreement. This is what it's held, um, this is what it takes to responsibly develop open source. The idea here is like herd immunity. Open source is only as strong as the weakest link. So we've had cases where you know, a developer accidentally committed some ArcSD code into GeoTools, and that took down GeoTools downloads, but also took down GeoServer downloads until we could sort out a replacement. So it's your responsibility when you're building this open source not to stuff it up, because you won't stuff it up for yourself. You'll stuff it up for yourself and everyone who depends on you. Um, can you publish? We want to make sure your documentation uses some kind of open license. Uh, so Creative Commons offers us that same re remix for, um, for developers. Development process, uh, people are pretty good about this. We want to make sure you have an issue tracker. We want to make sure you use version control. That's a really low bar for good software development. Fair uh, development, we want to make sure you're doing your public decision making. So this is open governance. So try and document how your project works in a developer's guide. Some projects do a request for uh, proposal, an RFC, um, as a way to solicit proposals and get them reviewed and approved. So we want to make sure your project's welcoming new developers and it, inviting them to take part. User documentation needs to be enough to um, kind of have enough detail for people to try out the core functionality of your application. Developer documentation, check out and build is not quite enough. We would actually like to have enough for developers to contribute a fix. Similarly for release guide, someone should be able to show up and make a new release of your software. So this is a little bit of the greater detail we go into with incubation. There's a checklist. Um, here's some examples of Providence reviews, and that's done in conjunction with a mentor. So that's what I have to say. How am I for time? One minute. Oh, okay, I'll go really slowly. When you do the difficult part, we do have a mentor to do this work with you. You're going to be working with a mentor, an experienced developer from our open source community. Uh, they can handle some of the issues uh, uh, with discretion if it's a license issue with legal consequence. And OSGO can provide your team um, with access to legal support. Uh, for graduation, when the mentor feels you're ready, you've completed your checklist, the mentor will make a motion, the incubation committee will review and do their voting, and then the chair, which is me right now, will make a recommendation to the board, and you'll be accepted uh, into the OSGO family. So uh, thank you folks very much. Do I have time for questions? Uh, 
Um, yeah, I hope there is there a second microphone there. I can repeat questions. Okay. You're warned I will give you a little bit of geocat swag if you ask a question. Or maybe even if you don't. They're, I, was, uh, they're yeah, I was just wondering, um, because I, yeah, I, I you know, you know we, we have uh, older and bigger uh, open source foundation like Apache and more recent ones like Cloud Native Cloud Foundation. Yeah. Um, and I assume you will have the same sort of problems and challenges. Uh, and are you in, in touch with these people? How actually, yeah. yeah. So the question is, are, do we work with other software foundations? Are we in touch? I want to be clear. If you join the OSGO Foundation, it doesn't preclude you from joining like the Linux Foundation or Location Tech. Um, and we do work with these uh, other groups. In particular, we don't have an army of lawyers on hand, so when we have trouble, we go and talk to the Free Software Foundation um, or the Eclipse Foundation. Both of these groups have worked with us in the past in order to help our projects. Thank you. Any other questions? Pass him a thing. What's your question? So we have a, a code base that's evolved over five years or so, and there's been a long round standing question amongst the steering council around uh, uh, handling people's copyright, yep. contributing code from different regions around the world. Mm -hmm. Some have default copyright, some don't. So, what's the sort of normal way to handle yeah. contributions in terms of copyright, and not just licensing? So the question is about how to handle copyright because not everyone believes in it. Uh, there is a. I can't remember the name of it, a Berlin copyright agreement from like 78. OSGEO actually uh, hired uh, by the hour legal counsel for the GeoTools project and we worked through these issues. And so we have clear guidance for you in the GeoTools project uh, based on uh, GeoTools receiving legal feedback. So we did find some things like you don't actually need your header in order to have copyright. Um, and the only real difficult parts we have right now are like interacting with folks like from the US government that can only publish into public domain. And it just puts a barrier on them contributing directly. So they can like publish into public domain, but that deprives you of that legal. Um, I think that's just because they're an employee. Yeah. yeah. So it, when, when folks are working for an employer uh, or themselves, uh, they'll contribute the code on behalf of the employer if they're working professionally or individually if uh, they're working as themselves. So OSGO has two CLAs for that effect, but we don't have a really clear way for U.S. government folks to contribute because the U.S. government can't really get over that barrier from um, public domain to open source. Yeah. Sorry if that wasn't totally clear. I can give you the links afterwards. Yeah. Minutes still. Okay. Anyone else? I can just hand out more little tins until you guys ask a question. Maybe I have a question. Have a tin. Um, for instance, when there is a uh, project. Oh. I have a quick question. Okay. Then just speak out, I'll repeat. So, Jody, how big does a project need to be? If I have a student who develops a really nice piece. Software, yeah. Just yeah. So that. Project. Yes. Yeah. So you could get that student to list themselves on the website here. That would be a perfectly good educational experience for them. If they are like a grad student, really exploring a topic, that's where we've got our OSGO community program to try and foster innovation and creativity. And so we'd be happy to recognize their work. But until they get on like solid funding from a couple different groups, they wouldn't be able to go through incubation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So thanks everyone. Oh, you had a question. No, no, I forgot. But I, d I just wanted to box with uh, stuff. <laughs> You already gave me one. <laughs> I know. So thank you very much again, uh, Jody. And um, oh, is the microphone still working? OK. And well, we have uh, now five minutes uh, for people to change uh, rooms. And 
in five minutes we'll start with the next uh, presentation. We'll do the small thing anyway. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for reminding me.